Hi, the Mud Brooker here. Today I am going to make crystallized ginger, or candied ginger if you prefer. It's very easy to make, and when I get done with that, I'm going to give you a little bonus recipe too. First thing you need, of course, is ginger. This is a little bit under a pound, and you want to break up your ginger root, break the lobes off of it, and you have to peel it. The easiest way to peel it is to scrape it with a spoon. Let's see, grab this piece. Especially a spoon that has a little bit of a square edge to it. You just scrape it with a spoon and the peel comes right off. Once you get done scraping it, if there's any little bits behind the knobs, or you got little dry spots like that, simply trim those off with a paring knife. Like so. I'm going to peel up the rest of this and then I'll be back. Once you have your ginger all peeled, rinse it off to get rid of any stray bits of skin that might be on there and we're ready to cut it up. I like to cut my ginger into as large a pieces as possible, but do not cut the roots lengthwise. Ginger is pretty fibrous and if you cut it lengthwise, you'll end up with really stringy crystallized ginger. If you cut it crosswise, it will cut across the fibers and it'll be nice and tender. It also helps a bit if you cut it on the diagonal as much as you can because that way you'll get a little bit larger pieces. Once you got this all cut up, we'll cover it with water and we'll simmer it for about 20 to 25 minutes. A word of warning though, if you have a lot of iron in your water, which I do, and you want to save the liquid for other purposes, which I'm going to do as well, you'll want to use bottled water. Iron, well, ginger contains a fair amount of tannins and you're going to extract some of those tannins when you simmer it. The tannins, after a while, will react with the iron in the water and turn it black. It won't affect the finished product, it won't turn the crystallized ginger itself black, and it's harmless, but it's pretty unappealing looking. So, which way, there we go. You want to slice these, oh, eighth of an inch thick, that's two or three millimeters to anybody who uses that particular system of measurement. Oop, that one's a little too thick. And if I was a skilled chef, I'd be done with this long before now. But you gotta settle for what you get on a YouTube video, I guess. Do do a couple more slices, and we're good. Anyway. Put enough water on this to cover it, plus just a little bit more. That's pretty good. Poke these guys down some. And we're ready to simmer that. I'll put that on the heat, get it boiled up, and I'll be back when that's ready to go. I've let my ginger simmer covered for 25 minutes. Take the cover off. Still a little steam there, hope I don't fog up my lens. And now I'm going to strain this off and save the liquid. If you don't like your ginger really strong, you can change the water after about 10 minutes and simmer it again for another 10. Maybe do that twice if you want to. But I recommend that you make at least a small batch full strength first, just to see how what you like. If you have any little bits of pulp stuck to the sides of your pan, just take a piece of paper towel and wipe those out quick. Because what we're going to do now is make a simple syrup, which is simply equal parts water and sugar. Put these back in the pan. Set this aside for later. 
and I got a cup of sugar here and I'll add a cup of water to start with that's about a cup and I'm gonna need a little more it doesn't need to be super precise but you need enough to cover your ginger by a good half inch or so so I'll just kind of eyeball about another half a cup of sugar and about another half a cup of water that's pretty close and that looks like about enough I'll give that a little bit of a stir and we're gonna put this back on bring it to a boil turn it down again and let it simmer uncovered this time and we're gonna cook that down until the syrup reduces by about half. Then we're going to come back and take the next step. I let this simmer down until the syrup had reduced by at least half of its volume and it's fairly thick. So now I will drain this off into the same liquid that I saved from before. Let them drip out a while. stuck. Let those drip through and drain a little bit. A couple more there. Set that aside. Move this out of the way. And while that's dripping we'll get a big flat dish and give it a good layer of sugar on the bottom. Now there's quite a bit of sugar here and I'll reuse this for something else so it's not going to go to waste but put a good layer of sugar in the bottom and then toss them a little bit so they get the last of syrup off separate your pieces and put a layer of them in the sugar still a little bit warm but they're not too bad I'll just do a few for right now to show you. Put them in there, scrub them around a little bit, and flip them over so that they have a good coating of sugar on them. Might have to flip them twice. And then put them on a rack. I won't bore you watching me do this to all of them, but we'll get you a few just to show you how to do it. If you have a dehydrator, don't use it for this. What will happen is once these start to dry in the, hydra in the dehydrator, they'll start to sweat, and that water that comes out of them will wash the sugar off and you won't have nice crystallized ginger. Put them on a rack. You can eat them now if you want, but they're best if you leave them set and dry overnight. Once I get these all done, I'll come back and show you and we'll get started on the bonus recipe. I finished rolling these around in sugar and this is the result. This, like I said before, this is about a pound of ginger now we let it sit overnight, try not to eat it all before it really dries. Let it sit and dry overnight and then you can put it in a jar or in a bag or some sort of container. Now let me get these out of the way and we will get on with my bonus recipe. This is the water that we boiled, that we simmered the ginger in and the syrup that we simmered it in. Got a measuring cup. As always, the first and most important part of any recipe is alcohol. I bet you thought I forgot that part, didn't you? And I'm going to make some ginger brandy. I have a pint of brandy here, which is two cups. We'll pour that in there. Glug, glug, glug. And to that, I will add 
about a cup of this here liquid. Give that a little stir. Give it a little taste. Oh, that's good. And we'll bottle her up. Because surely you have an old wild turkey bottle sitting around your house. Swirl that up. Let me grab my shot glass. Get that out of the way. You can also use this for ginger tea. Put a little lemon, a little honey in there, warm it up. It's delicious. But that's kind of a waste of perfectly good ginger brandy makings. I would like to thank my patrons on Patreon. Benedict Riggers, Kay's Kissed, Joy Jones, Tiarna Jenkins, and Damian Bamer. Here's to you guys. Oh, that's good. This stuff also makes a fantastic hot toddy when you have a cold. A little bit of water, a little lemon, a little bit of honey, and that will cure what ails you. If you'd like to join my patrons on Patreon, the link will be below. And there you have it, both ginger brandy and crystallized ginger in one easy process. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.